This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so in Perek uh, Dalu, the fourth chapter of Chavos Havavos of Shavuot Olakim, he's working through the different Madregos. Steve, if you, if you can mute yourself now, it looks like we get some bounce back. Oh, sorry, I, yeah. can do, I can do it for you. If, if it's a, got it. Good. So he's working through the ten madre goats, the ten different levels of a person's understanding of our role here in this world and um, acceptance of the role that we are meant to be playing here in this world. Our understanding of God's involvement in this world and the role that we are meant to be playing. Hamadrigat Shi'it. So the ninth level is Anashim people He'eminu, the Torah. They believe in the Torah. They accept the truth of the divinity of the Torah. Uvi Gemul, and that there is a Gemul, there is repayment, so to speak. Uva Onesh, and there is accountability. Aleha, for one's adherence to this Torah of ours. Vishneya Olamim in two of these worlds, both in Olam Hazen, the world that we are in now, and in the world to come. V'kivano b'avodat Hashem lishmo, and his intent, his focus in serving Hashem is not in order to receive goodies, it's not in order to receive the reward, but it is lishmo, it is for the sake of God's name. As it is fitting for one to be serving Hashem, Ella Shalonishmeru Mimafside Haavodot. But he has not been careful with those things which are mafsid, which detract from our Avoda. The Nichnas have said Alehen, and therefore there is this hefse, there is this loss that enters into his service of Hashem. Below Hikiru, may I am, without realizing the insidious effects that some of these things might have by his not being so careful that these things can affect, whether it is Shmira Talashon, whether it is being careful about what one says, how one says it, the manner in which one speaks, or what things a person might be looking at that one should not be looking at, whatever it might be. And this is compared to that which it says in Kohelis. This is an incre- This is a Pasuk that, um, you know, a person can, can build a lifetime of a good reputation and with just a with a little bit of silliness, with a little bit of indiscretion, can uh, can wreck it. The Pasuk says, Zivuve Mavet. Zivuve Mavet, he explains here, are flies. Zivuv, right? That is a, uh, that's like the word boom that the bomb makes. Zivuv, right? It makes a sound like a, uh, like a fly makes. Mavet, those that are on the verge of death, right? It's the cold winter, and they're 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 on the verge of dying. Yavish, yabia, shemen, rokeach. Nevertheless, if they were to fall in, right? They can yavish, yabia, shemen, rokeach. They can spoil, cause a froth, a spoil to the finest of oils. Similarly, yikar mechachma mikavod, even greater, heavier than, than, honor, than, than wisdom and honor, sichlut ma'at. A little bit of silliness can take away all that one has established in terms of wisdom, in terms of honor. Right, sometimes just just a, a little indiscretion can can destroy can destroy what might have been years of a person building up their name, their reputation. So there are those things that, with a little bit of carelessness, 
They are mafside havodot. They are things that cause a hefset, a loss uh, from all the from one service. Or it says in Kohelet, or again in Kohelet, the chote echad yovad tovaharbe. One sin can cause a loss of so much, so much good. Right? That can have such an effect on a person's avoda. Now, we have a general rule that if I do one thing wrong, that's not going to take away from all the good that I have done. There's only one way that I could lose the sechar, the reward for good that I have done. And what is that? If I regret it, right? Because we always have the zel umatzeh, the balance. So just like when it comes, we have the concept of teshuva and that regretting having done something wrong, regretting and, and confessing it to God and, uh, and accepting not to continue to do such a thing. So those are, that is a way to not only erase the bear that was done, but actually can turn it into a zechut, into a merit, because I'm using that as a catalyst for myself to grow and to improve. Well, so too, there's always zel umatzeh, we have that balance. And so too, the way that a person can lose the schar, the reward for a good thing, is by regretting ever having done it. And as I often say, you know, a person might say, well, why would, everyone, why would anyone ever regret having done it? Well, some of you drive with someone, right? And imagine, you know, they let someone into the lane in front of them, and then they are trying to switch lanes, and that person won't slow down to let them in. What do we say? I never should have let them in in the first place, right? So uh, there can be this... Um, this tit for tat that we sometimes have and regret and regret good things that we've done. And some chasidim have said to their students as follows, If you had no sins at all, I would still be afraid for you. From something that is even greater, even bigger, worse than sins. Amrulo, they said back to the teacher, to the Rebbe, Mahu Gadam and Avonos. What is greater, what is bigger than the Avonos? Amar, he said, Hagavhut Vahagaava, this um, pride and this haughtiness. As the Pasuk says to Moshe Marakasa, once again, Shlomo Melech, now it's in Mishle, Toavat Hashem. Call Giva Lev. Hashem despises all those who have this haughty heart. And explanations given, I have some notes on the bottom here, and not my own notes, just uh, commentaries here. And, you know, if I do something wrong, I do an Avera, I recognize I've done an Avera. And therefore, I regret it and I look to, to, uh, to correct it and to improve going forward. It makes me, it, it humbles me. But if I have no Averos, then what happens? I'm feeling quite haughty about that. <laughs> I'm pretty good. No Averos, no Averos. So not only right, do I have this problem now of gava, of haughtiness, but I don't see anything wrong with myself. So there is no impetus to try to, to, try to change, to try to improve. Right? Not noticing the flies and the perfume. Is that, yeah, I'm trying to connect how that connects to the idea before. Um, it, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Gabriella. It could connect somewhat. You know, the, the idea before is that a person can, right, we, we're talking about the ninth level over here. So we're talking about really, really serious stuff, serious individuals on a serious madrega. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, they can come, they, they can um, go uh, uh, tumbling down at a certain point with a certain mistake, and it can just shatter so much of, of that which they have done, right? That's what he was talking about before when he mentioned the fly into the oil. This little fly falls into the oil, and it ruins this this fine, fine oil. Yeah, I, I would say what you're saying, though, is correct. You know, gava, having haughtiness, 
Now, it would also be a way of taking away from all that which one has accomplished. If one's going to have this this gava, this haughtiness, so then that will that will take away from all that which one has accomplished. That yeah, that would be a nice example of uh, of the fly into the oil, All right? And, and, and Hashem, right? Actually, there's a possible so the, the heavens are Hashem va'aretz hadom raglav, and the 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 the, er, the earth, the heavens is God's place, so to speak, and the earth is his footstool. Footstool. So the Gemara says that a person who has hoardiness, he's dochek ragle shechina. He pushes away the feet of the shechina. He's pushing God out of this world because, right, I'm here, right? I can handle it. I'm, I'm on my own. And there's also Masil Sushama speaks about this, how, how the, the, there's always the battle, right? I'm doing great. I'm not doing, I'm, I'm not doing, I'm, I'm keeping my mitzvahs. I'm not doing Averis, right? So then you will automatically have that concern, that worry, that that the haughtiness will will um, will sneak in. We say in our we just said in our Mariv the the last bracha of of uh, of Mariv we say that Vaser Satan remove the Satan milfanenu omeyacharenu from in front of us and from behind us. So what does that mean? So the Satan in front of us is what uh, what tries to to, to prevent us from doing mitzvot. What is the satan that's behind us? Oh, that's once I've done the mitzvah to try to soil it, to try to sully it, to spoil it. And certainly gava is one of the ways that, that a mitzvah can be spoiled afterwards. That's why I often say, you know, we should, we should try to do some mitzvot that no one knows about. It's just between us and Hashem, not for anyone else to know about, not for anyone else to give us honor and say, oh, this person is so amazing. Do you know what that person did? Just keep it on the, uh, on the, on the quiet side. Lastly, Hamadrega Ha'asirit, the 10th Madrega. An Hashem people, Hitbarara Etzlam Amita Tatora. It's barur, clear to them, the truth of the Torah. The kol ma shehem chayavim, and all which, that which they are obligated, min hagmul, va'onesh aleha, once again, the response, the, the effects of all of our actions, both positive and negative, both v'shnei olamim, in the two worlds, and remember over there we had those who were not number nine those who were not careful from those who from from those things which could detract they are nit mihit al mutam and they are wide awake fully aware not to be lacking anything in their avodas hashem and their serving hashem and their heart sees, feels that which they are, that which they owe, that which they are obligated to the Creator. Based upon the incredible amount of tov, good, chesed, kindness, alehem that God sends upon them. Below samulibam elagmul va'onesh. And their hearts are not focused on, oh, I'm going to get rewarded, or oh, I don't want to get punished. Ahmaru, rather, they go quickly with alacrity, El Avodas Elohim, to serving Hashem, Lishmo, for the sake of God's name, Ligadel, Ularomeim, to make him great and uplifted, Bit Kosef. And they have this tremendous desire to do this. Ubilavav shalem, and with a full heart. Bavor yidiatam oto, vahakaratam et inyano, because of their knowledge of God and their recognition of all that which He does. So they are all in because they recognize how they are just awash 
with brachos that come to them, with blessings and kindness that comes to them from Hashem. And all they want to do is, what can I do uh, in turn? What can I do? Right? We, uh, as we'll soon see, he'll discuss this. Right? We, we can't do anything for Hashem. Hashem doesn't need anything. But what we can do is to follow his directives. Vizot hamale harama. And this is the level that is the most high. Shibba madrigat, amongst all the levels of Anshei HaTorah, of those who connect themselves to the Torah. Vizot ma'alat ha'neviyim. This is the ma'ala, the level of the neviyim, the prophets. Va'chasidim, and those who are true chasidim. Asher nimsuru el ha'elokim, who give themselves over to Hashem. V'kar to imo brit, and make this covenant with him. Visachro imo, they're they're sold over to God. Viskimu alav, and they and they and 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 they 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 rely on him. Vinatru lo nafshotam uvnehem vikinyanam vitanu gehem, and they give to God their lives, their families, their acquisitions, their pleasures. Vamdu beemunasam. And they stand strong and faithful. Kibblu al Naf Shotam. That when they they have accepted upon themselves to sanctify Hashem's name, and they are strong and unwavering in that. Va'alayim, and about them, Amar of the Pasuk says in Tehillim, Isfuli Chasidai, Korte Briti, Ale. Zevach. This is in the time to come. Hashem will say, He'll call out the heavens and earth and say, Gather, bring to me those Hasidim with whom I made the covenant, and they have stood with that covenant. They have sanctified my name, Ale Zevach, even when the nations. Zevach slaughtered, even when the nations came at them, right, with harshness, with cruelty, with murder. Nevertheless, they had this, this stalwart connection and, and allegiance to me. That is the Madriga Ha'asirit, the tenth. Vizot Tsura Tara Hatoria. This that we explained over here, remember, we started off. It's been a long parak, a long chapter. And we started off that there is the, the motivation that comes from the Seichel and that which comes from the Torah. This is a description over here of those who are moved and Connect to the Torah. Shalidei Torah, Anshei Chachma, the Sefer Torah, Utchunot, Umalot, and the different divisions and the levels of Hamaminim Ba of those who believe in it and, like I said, incorporate that into their lives. The Efshi Shemat Seif Madrigot Anshei Utchunot the Torah Zulati Mashesi Barnu. You might find some besides the ten that I just described. Ah, however, Zacharnu Hanimsa Alav. Ah, Zacharnu Hanimsa Alav Rov Hamon Hauma. We have described that which includes the vast majority of the nation. Ub Zacharnu Oto, and by mentioning that toalato muchach, right? The gains of my mapping this out for you are clear. Someone who is seeking this straight path. If one recognizes in oneself, oh, this is, this kind of describes where I'm at. Yeda, he'll now know, or she'll now know, Masha Smuchala, Menat Okay, 
what is the next step that one should try to ascend to? The ishtadel to try la'alote leha, to ascend to it. And to recognize where I'm at and what is at the top of the ladder. And always, we always say it's very important that a person goes step by step in a measured, clear-minded manner. It's something that I saw very, very often when I was teaching the Shiva in Israel, that the people who all of a sudden, so to speak, you know, put on a whole different uh, set of clothes, so to speak, right? So then it's just as easy to switch back to the way they were. But when it's steady steps, that is when it becomes integrated to who the person is, and that is when it has that kiyum. The parable is given, you know, it, Hashem is at the top of the ladder. He's telling us, come on up, come on up, kids. I'm waiting for you here. So if you're at the top of the ladder, the last thing you want is someone to go running as fast, flying as, climbing as fast as they can up the ladder. Chances are they're not going to make it to the top and they're going to end up falling and hurting themselves in the process. You want it to be steady. So this has given us this roadmap, how a person can ascend madrega, acher madrega. Right, so you see now where you are and the deducing where, where one is, and the El Yona, and the top of the Tchunot, the Yishtadel Alote Leha, and one should attempt to ascend Madrega, Acher Madrega, the Yeze Yerter Kal Alav. Right? And that will be a more doable now that A, I have mapped it out, and B, one understands that we need to go in steps. Perik Hay. Wow, took us a while to get here. Chapter 5, which is quite a bit shorter than uh, Chapter 4 was. Bura'ui lanu ata. Now it is fitting for us, Levair, to explain, Ofane hahara hasichlit, to explain now how one uses one seichel, al derech hasheila. We're going to do it in a question and answer format, right? Judaism puts a lot of emphasis on the question and answer format. Of course, the, the clearest example of that is the Pesach Seder, where the Allah is, even if you're having a Seder by yourself, nevertheless, you ask the questions, you ask the Manishtana, and then you go through the answers. When we have a question, that is when our ears open up, our heart opens up to try to understand the answer. Ad sof hasha'ar. And that is how we will be continuing until the end of this sha'ar, until the end of this sha'ar, this gateway of Avodas Elohim, which altogether has 10 chapters. So it's going to be continuing on, right, in such a manner, he says, at sof hashar, until the end of this shar. Ba'avur ma sheyesh b'zeh min ha'biyor va'agiloi lemech kareinu. Because that will help in explaining and opening up ideas that we are investigating. V'nomar, and we'll begin and say, ki ha'ra ha'sichlit, he has karat halukim et haadam ve em saut sichlo ladat oto ulahakir simane chachmato. Hashem sends reminders to us. Hashem gives us wake up calls. Right? They call here tizkoret, a reminder. And he sends that to us via our seichel. We need to use our seichel and our nishama in order. In order that we will reach out, know him, ulahakir, 
and recognize his chachma, that his wisdom that is here in the world. Or and this these wake up calls will have this godly effect on a person who looks at the Torah as being or Linativato, the Torah being the light through which one thereby travels, the path that one takes in life. Kushumagia El Tahlit Sihlo U Barur Hakarato that when a person uses it like that, so then he will reach the purpose of the seichel, the, of the wisdom that God has given us. And and the person will have this tremendous desire to connect to God's will. Ula'alot, b'ma'alot, Hachasidim, and to ascend the level of those of of the righteous, and to be able to um, cleanse one's heart from the worries of this world, the bothers of this world, but to have the the perspective and the understanding of how to understand this world, how to deal with the mishaps that come our way, that is all part of what Hashem is sending us and allowing us to to rise up above and not be dragged down by it. Ach, hadvarim adam adam hara right? The way that a person will be able to reach this, what he calls ha'ara hasichlit, our minds pushing us, motivating us, there need to be some prerequisites, meaning a person needs to have certain basic understandings and basic approaches. And then this ha'ara sichlit then the mind can then lead us to, to the proper place. What are these? Sheet barer etzlo. It must be clear to the person, mashanata habore b'seichel hamadabrim. That which God has planted, implanted, so to speak, into the seichel of human, into the minds of humankind. Ideas keshevach ha'emet. Appreciating. Praising truth, ugnut hachazav, and the, the the lowliness of kazav of of falsehood, ubechor betzedek, and to choose tzedek that which is righteous, that which is proper, the sur may avel, and to move away from that which is crooked ugmul bale hatov bitov vehodotam and that one should repay good with good and to hodot and to praise to acknowledge to express that appreciation ugmul anshe haraa bira ugnutam and we'll, we'll, we'll unpack this in a moment. Let's just first translate. And to pay back people of, of, of evil with bad. And to, and to um, genut, and to decry them, and to um, condemn them. Now, we are not allowed to take nikama. We're not allowed to take revenge. Now, Revenge, we say, kel nekamot Hashem, kel nekamot Ophia. God is a God of revenge. Because revenge does not mean, oh, you do this to me, I'm going to do it to you. 
Revenge means there will be an evening of the score, an evening out of the score. A person has done, we call that mida connected mida. A person has done something wrong, right? Then that will come back to that person. We say what well, goes around comes around. There's Gemara in Baba Kama that tells a story of a wealthy person who had a field and was fields right along the, the public thoroughfare. And there were stones in his field. You can't have stones in your field. So he's taking the stones and throwing them onto the, onto the public pathway. And someone walked by, walking by he said to him, why are you throwing the stones from that which is not yours to that which is yours? And the wealthy landowner laughed at this, at this foolish person with this fool. What do you mean? I'm throwing from that which is not mine to that which is mine. This is my field. I'm throwing from that which is mine to that which is not mine. Well, a number of years later, this person who was very wealthy was no longer quite so wealthy and was walking along that road alongside what had been his field. And he tripped on a stone that he had thrown there years before. And then he understood that what this person had said, right? The public thoroughfare, that is ours. That we know is ours. Private thoroughfare, that which is ours today, we have no idea to whom it will belong the next day. So there is this idea of this gemul. So God evens the score. The problem is that we can't be trusted with that. We can't be trusted to do it in a perfectly tzedek, righteous, even-handed, properly balanced manner. Once we have our own feelings that get mixed in, we can't be trusted. But a person needs to recognize this idea because that then will play into how he will understand with God that for the good that I do, there will be repercussions. And for the bad that I will do, also there will be repercussions. And the genutam, right, to condemn, right, right, to condemn not the person, but to condemn the bad behavior. And that way that strengthens within ourselves and with those around us that that is not behavior that we want to be doing. Ula hashlim im b'nei ha'adam. Ula hitiv alehem. And, right, to be in a shalom state with people. Right, that these are all the values that one needs to have as the basis in order to come on to this hit over root This, this um pushes that God will be giving us to our seichel. That we need to lashlim in bnei adam. We need to be in we're in a state of shalom with people. Uleitiv alehem, and to do good, to do good. To them, now, it was interesting on a, a Friday night meal. So we had a lot of the, a lot of Devorah's friends here from Irvine, and a lot of the families of those friends that she was always over at their houses. And and uh, everyone said a few words. And one of the one of the younger brothers of one of her friends, right. You know, so he he spoke also. It was so sweet. Everybody spoke, and and he said, you know, one time he walked home from shul with Devora, right? And she really paid attention to him. Like, how are you? How are you doing? Right? And it made him feel, you know, like like a million like, like a million bucks. I think he had a crush on her, but whatever the case might have been, right? It made him feel like a million bucks, and. And it was so, and Devorah didn't really remember that, you know, that 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 event, right? But but you see that you know sometimes you don't even remember, but it could have it, it can make such a lasting effect on 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 someone else, right? It's it, it's incredible. How some some will come out to Nal and I. We spent the Shabbos at your house when we were teenagers, when we were in Israel, you know, and we have no clue who they are, right? And that made such an impression on you. You never know, 
But if we can try to live our lives with this sense of uh, to be shalom with people, and to and, and, and to do to do good to, to try to give out good to them, if we could try to mac- maximize the encounters that we have, that is how we uh, enrich our lives, enrich other people's lives, and we enrich the world. Lashlim to be in a state of shalom with people, and to do whatever you can do to be the conduit of tov, of good, that goes out to them. And, and to and to weigh the tovot, the, the, the good, just one second. Yeah, and to to praise the good things properly, vatzdakot bigmul, and to pay back, right? According to someone does good to you, to do whatever you can to repay that to them, varaot baonesh, right? And and again, we have to be careful with this, but you know the bad should also be held accountable, or to recognize that that's how it needs to be. The Yitron Gmul al Gmul, the Onesh al al Onesh, right? And understand how good brings about good and bad brings about bad. Vamechila the potion. And to forgive those who have who have harmed, who have done wrong, the shuvam the emet, when they truly, truly uh, regret that. So I go a little bit further. And when the, when this when all of these concepts are clear, this is the foundation. So that's in the person's mind and understanding. Yes, shalem. Now his sechel, his mind is shalem, is complete. And his understanding is strong. And if God will send these reminders to him in the way that that um, Hashem sends these wake-up calls, then his mind will recognize and appreciate the good that God is sending to him. And that will strengthen him. And when a person will now start to try to count them and to recognize the sikhlo, all the good that Hashem does constantly for us. Below and one realizes that we can't even begin to fathom all the good. Because of how encompassing they are and how numerous they are. And how consistent they are. And how they extend forward and forward. A person will then demand of oneself. Right, once, as you said before, it's been clarified in his mind. How I need to compensate those who've done good to me. I need to show them good and to choose righteousness. And a person will want to, how do I want to pay back God? I'll rove for all the incredible good that he does to me. The kasher when a person realizes, I can't. I can't pay Hashem back. Right, being that Hashem has no need for anything that I can offer him. So then what's the next step? Then I realize I need to leak kana. I need to humble myself before God. Liot shafel v'nakel etzalatzmo. Right, to humble myself before God. Right, the antithesis of that ga'ava, of that hoardiness that we were discussing before. Then his mind will demand, okay, but what can you do? 
asher bahem yitachin la geshet litkarev elokim. What things can you do which will allow you to draw close to God? Kedei shihiyet tmurat mulo. If I can't pay him back, let me at least do that which I can do. Biareyu sichlo al aderech hayishara bazeh. And that will, and then a person's seichel will be able to guide him on the straight path of how to do that, as we will explain as we go forward. Okay, my friends. Can I pencil? Okay. Tell me what page number you're on. 291. Okay, I got that. And we are Safari of five what? Six. Five, six? Yes. Good. Okay. Thank you, Esther. Two, nine, one, and five, six. Good. Okay, my friends. We'll call it over here. Good Thank to see you. Everybody. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. You want to call Chris, please? I'll call Chris.